Hey dude, today I am going to be making a chill lo-fi beat. Now, I wanted to show you what I was going to do and how I do it because, well, I've done a full run-through of me writing a lo-fi track from scratch to finish. But I wanted to just focus on the beat today because sometimes you don't start with a full idea in your head, sometimes you just start with a beat. And that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh... I'm going to take it down to, let's first of all, figure out the tempo. I think I want it to, let's try 80. Boom. 880. <laughs> Dum. Ka. Dum. Perfect. Cool. Let's, 80 is my tempo. I like to start with the kick. Um, just to, the kick and the snare, basically, just to shape the beat as nicely as possible. Now, the, generally the kick is the one that's going to be doing the fancy movement in lo-fi. You can put the snare, you know, on the offbeat. There's no rules saying you can't. But generally, it will be on the, uh, well, depending on how you structure the beat, but the, the two and the four of the beat. One, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Or one, you know, you kind of just want to think of what's going to give you the vibe you want. Do, 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 ka. So I'm going to be going on the one, two, the third of the beat for my snare. So let's find a kick sample I like. So again, I'm going to be using these Def Demon Lo Fi kit samples. I think they're fantastic. Really cool. And, you know, keep it nice and easy. Favorite kick. I mean, that sounds quite cool. Let's choose that one. Boom. I don't like to overthink things too much, and I don't think you should either, because at the end of the day... Oh, I don't want to kick, do I? At the end of the day, it's kind of about just getting your ideas out. That's my belief anyway. And then fiddling with them later. Warm snare. That's, I mean, that's quite a... Yeah, I'll go for that one. I, I often, with this stuff, I often actually like more of a found sound type of snare, you know, more of a someone's accidentally dropped something on the floor type of snare. Um, you know, or that type of snare. <laughs> oh, I dropped my mouse snare. I should sample that. Anyway, let's... Uh, I mean, that's... <laughs> I'm not going to be going on the... I'm not going to be going that fast by any, by any, by any means. Um, I've zoomed in so much so that I've forgotten where I am. So let's just undo that loop and put that there. So it should be on the one and the three, like this. <laughs> Otherwise. Yep, okay. And I want boom, boom here. And then I'm going to throw in a, a kind of a 16th little drop here. No, not a drop, little little kick just to kind of lead us into the next section of the beat. And then that will kind of feel a little bit awkward, but you quite, you know, it's quite good with lo-fi to have either some swung elements there or the odd 16th. It's a little bit late or, you know, feels late. And then I'm going to add in another kick here just to make it feel with the second time we've got it around. So it doesn't feel so much like a loop. And I'll change this last bit. In fact, maybe what I'll do is I'll put I'll put that there. So and then I'll use the It's kind of got a nice heartbeat feel to it. I like it. Okay. Um, now, you can actually get away with just having a beat like this. This is fine because it ultimately depends on what you are going to be doing with the rest of the track. Now, the idea for this track is that it's going to be for my lo fi moniker, which is King Sonborn. And uh, I like to use acoustic instruments and I like to use found sounds in my beats. 
because it's fun and it, it adds character. No one else is going to be recording the same plastic bag as me. And, uh, you know, so I'm going to grab a couple of bits of percussion that I haven't got. I mean, actually, I could just. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to be doing some uh, a little bit of. Uh, just find what I've, I'll just use what I've got rather than like getting out the actual percussion instruments for now. I mean, I should really have prepared myself with some herbs and spices in pots for shakers. That would have been fun. So let's see if I can imitate some kind of snare or high, no, snare, sorry, hi-hat. That'll do. Let's go for it, shall we? Let's see what we've got. Uh, have I set the input to one? Let's go to my Aperture device. It needs, there we go. There we go. Right now, I'm fully aware that there's going to be some heavy old latency going on because there always is. Uh, so I'm, I'll fix that in the, I'll fix that later on. But let's just get this idea going. So this is the hi-hat, essentially. Nothing complicated, just basically playing on the beat. Okay, cool. Pen. Okay. Yeah, cool. Kind of, you know, it's a little bit, little bit clicky for my liking, which is a silly thing to say given that I've recorded a pen. Um, but you know, hey ho. Uh, so my way to get around that is to pitch shift. Uh, Drop it down quite. Maybe I'll put the mix up a little bit. There we go. Cool. Okay, now um, I do actually have a jar here. It's empty, but I wonder if there's anything I can put in here. Um, <laughs> I mean, elastic bands won't work, will they? Uh, Oh, my daughter has left handy little little bracelet. This wasn't planned. I mean, that's pretty perfect, isn't it? <laughs> this is gonna be my shaker. Uh, so, like I said, this actually wasn't planned, and I'm not doing it for kind of like, hey, look at me, how cool and clever I am. I'm just doing it like, just grab what's around you to make the sounds, uh, and I need a shaker basically. Um, if I didn't have this, I could have used. In fact, I probably still will use that, but that was my pen pot filled with beaters and things. So let's, uh, let's give it a go, shall we? Sorry, I just realized I'm peeking and I know I'm actually not a massive perfectionist with this regard to this thing, with regard to most things, but yeah, might as well do it again. Same thing again, let's pitch shift it down. And Okay, nice. Okay, I'm just gonna think about other things. So one of the things I like to do is I like to have that kind of sound of a of a whoosh uh, into the snare. Um could be yeah let's do that one yeah this is my notebook pages spinning around in the in in the notebook no i don't want that oh, I don't. there we go so i'm going to do it into this snare the second one let's see how we go
Cool, just got a couple of them. Uh, I might need to normalize these just to make sure that they sound all right. <laughs> yes, that sounds great. Notebook. Notebook effects. Okay, now uh, I'm going to have to probably uh, low pass that. Yeah, look at all that crazy low end, which is not needed. Mate, I love that. What's this one? I mean, that sounds as cool as well. Yay! Right, so I'm going to put that on the second and third time we hear the beat. Or the snare, sorry. It's a veteran prayer wheel. Mm. Not sure I'll use that. Uh, I want something a bit scrunchy, so I might. Uh, use a bit of post. A bit of paper. Uh, snare whoosh thingy. Technical name. Yeah. Let's go. I love doing stuff like this. It's so much fun. Hold on. I was recording a time lapse of myself recording the recording. Uh, meta, isn't it? I mean, I'm really chuffed with this. I think this sounds really cool. I remember most of this is just me just recording what I've got. I mean, it, it sounds a bit tinny, but who cares? So I'm just going to put on my um, mastering chain just so I can have an, an inkling as to how it's going to sound when I do that. Uh, and then I'm just going to do a couple more things and then I think I'm done, maybe. Um, so, first of all, passive EQ. I'm not overthinking this, guys. I'm just going to Mastering Club. Hello. Uh, and I want something to warm it up, uh, which is going to be my PSP Vintage Warmer. Um, I've been using the wrong setting. Mix First A2, which is nice and warm and fuzzy. And we want uh, this, which is my new favourite. No, not HY Lo-Fi. My new favourite uh, limiter the uh, master plan. I mean, that sounds really cool, but what it, what it was revealing to me is the snare. Bit harsh. So let's uh, unharsh the snare. What am I doing? I'm finding this this loop is driving me insane. <laughs> it's shifting. Let's take it down. There we go. Let's hear it. Now. Okay, now I also want to put it in a bit of reverb. I'm going to put it in a plate because I like snares in plates. I mean, I could do gated. No, let's do gated. Uh, let's see what that sounds like. Gated reverbs. Uh, yeah, let's try the percussion one. No, that sounds absolute rubbish. It's probably the it's probably the wrong one, but I'm not. Let's get ooh drum plate. You've sold me.
cool. And now also the, the kick, I want it to be a bit punchier. It's a bit like, which I know it sounded like that when I picked it, but you know, I don't want that to happen. So we've got, I'm going to go for the drum shaper, just give it a bit more attack, a bit, a little less sustain. Soft clipping, take the presence down. Oh, oh kick, sorry. Tightness, yes, please. Yeah, that pitch shifter, that space designer does not work. It sounds too... That's better. It kind of loses the, the bite of the snare. It makes it sound like a, a snare drum where you've actually taken the snare off. So, okay, right. What I might do is I might actually bring an actual sample of a hi-hat in. Because <sighs> although the glasses are cool, I pitch shifted them down and they've kind of lost a bit of... Uh... Yeah, that'll do. A bit of bite. Not that it needs it, but just, just to kind of carry it along a little bit. Right, now try it. Cool. Now let's just clean this up a little bit and then I think it is done. So single band EQ, let's go through the hats. So when you're doing this type of stuff, it's, it is actually good to kind of not just solo it, but hear it in the mix. You know, how much can you get away with taking out before you really notice it? So I like this. I'm actually going to give the, the hats, I'm going to send the hats to the left a little bit as if I'm the player. Play up. There we go. I like this, but should I widen it? Uh, should I? Should I? Direction mixer. Mixer. No, I know what it needs. It needs fake stereo. This is one of my favorite tricks. I've been using it for years, uh, which is uh, sample delay. Okay, I've just taken it down a bit, a notch. Paper scrunching. Um, let's send the shaker a little bit to the right to kind of alternate. Right, now, at this point in time, you could create some drum buses. So, a, a bus within a bus, essentially. So, I, I could take um, the hats up through to maybe even the snare, and just leave the kick separate, uh, create a track stack here. Um, and this will be the perk stack, the percussion stack, where I actually put the lo-fi effects on which you can do using just EQs, distortion, etc., or amps, uh, but I'm going to be using uh, RC20 Retro Color. I, th I think sometimes the noise is a bit uh, overpowering. Hello. I mean, it's a lot of noise, right? So. Ooh. 
There we go. I'm quite happy with that. Admittedly, it's just a B on its own, which is fine, but I'm going to be recording plenty of other things on top of that. Uh, so your takeaways, guys, or oh, dude, the one person watching this is, or listening to this, uh, or not, it's probably just me watching it on my phone. Um, it's remember, dude, me, you, uh, start with a kick and snare, just give it some basic shape, uh, then give it more movement and space with all the percussive elements. You don't need to have any sub. I could have done this using no samples, pre-made samples whatsoever. Uh, I mean, most of this is, so, you know, the pen, the pot with a bracelet in it, paper scrunching, uh, my notebook closing. A lot of that. And then it just becomes its own thing, this lovely, interesting sound, which actually, I just want to... I'm going to take the snare out of that bar, that percussion bus. Yeah, I just wanted to soften it up a little bit uh, using a bit of EQ on that. Um, it's quite a harsh EQ, to be fair, but, you know, I like it. So start with the, the kick and snare, and then just make it interesting with percussion. I didn't actually alter any of the timings, so it's all slightly wonky and off, and that's one of the reasons why I love lo-fi. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.